All right, today is part four on uh, metals and how to weld them. And uh, in case you didn't see the first one, I'm recommending metals and how to weld them. This book, you can get it from the James F. Lincoln Arc Welding Foundation, the best spend ever for a welding book. It's about 10 bucks. Uh, people actually buy these and sell them on eBay for 15 or 20 bucks. You can get them straight from the Lincoln Foundation site for 10, along with a whole bunch of other really good deals because they're a nonprofit. Okay, so it's aluminum today. We're on part four. It's aluminum. We've covered carbon, stainless, and nickel already. It's time for aluminum now. Now, uh, when I say we, we're going to talk about this today, a little housekeeping here. Uh, somebody kind of broke my balls a little while ago and said, uh, hey, uh, why do you say we all the time? Uh, you know, if it's just you, say I, unless there's a bikini model, you know, somewhere. And if there is, bring her out. Let's see her, okay? So there is no bikini model. It's just me. There is my wife, who is, by the way, smoking hot. Smoking. All right? I hope she's watching this because this is going to do me some good later on. Okay, so aluminum. Aluminum alloys. Let's run through them. I'm going to talk quick because this, the video is going to be long anyway. So I'm going to talk as fast as I can. So here we go with my fast talking. Okay, 1100 series aluminum. That's basically pure aluminum. You're going to see that mostly in things that need to be electrically conductive. You won't see much of it in your welding and fabricating uh, uh, career, most likely. 2000 series, probably not going to see a lot of that either. That's mostly aircraft. 2024 is real popular in aircraft. Not considered very weldable. Very strong. It's heat treatable. Uh, 3000 series is uh, work hardenable. It's manganese added. For, to be to be strong from work harding, but it's not heat treatable. Very weldable, very formable. Hit it with a press brake, you can break a sharp 90 on it. That's why it's so popular. All your truck boxes, toolboxes out of your aluminum polished tread plate, most of that is 3003. 4000 series aluminum is silicon, and that is uh, mostly you're going to see that in your filler rods. Uh, 4043, 4047 uh, filler rods because of silicon, and that just works better for filler rods. It slows the cooling rate, solidification rate, shrinkage stresses, and all that. Works good for filler rods. 5000 series or ma uh, magnesium alloy. You're going to see it in uh, some some uh, uh, marine tubing like 5052 and some other alloys. Uh, your clear anodized uh, marine tubing, a lot of that's 5000 series. 6061 or 6000 series is really popular for racing, bicycles, and all that kind of stuff. And the 6061 T6 is probably one of the more common uh, because very weldable and also really strong. 7000 series, you're not going to see a lot of because it's, uh, again, aircraft, 7075 is aircraft skin, largely very strong, heat treatable, not weldable, at least not if you care about anything. You, 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 can, you can weld it, uh, it, it, it cracks. And, uh, and then uh, that's mostly it. There's some others, but that, that gonna make up, that's going to make up almost anything we care about. Um, there's some 8000 series. I've you know, been welding 30 years and hadn't, hadn't seen them. So, uh, so uh, also one more thing, castings, aluminum castings, 355, 356, 357. Very popular. They're, they're very similar. Your things like uh, your transmission housings, your alternator housings, uh, all kinds of aluminum castings. Are, it's a very popular alloy to make those things out of. So, so what we're going to talk about today is, and I said we again, oh well. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, some things to look out for when you weld aluminum, all aluminum. So, you know, number one, if you get aluminum at a scrap yard, if you don't know what it is, you don't, you don't want to use it for anything critical. Don't build a ladder, tree stand, or anything like that out of aluminum if you don't know what grade of aluminum it is. You can't, you can't afford for it to be uh, some kind of non-weldable aluminum, and then here you go, you know. So if you, if you see a ladder and it's got nothing but rivets all in it, what, is, what are the odds that, that it's weldable? Because, you know, if it was weldable, they might have welded it. So you don't know. It's not a good idea to weld on a ladder and uh, for that reason. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting off track. Um, I, mentioned, uh, the, I mentioned the metals. I mentioned the metals and how to weld them. Uh, textbook, again, best spend, 10 bucks. Do it. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a short read, and it's not written with PhDs in mind. It's written for guys like you and me in mind. So uh, get that book. And uh, all right, we're off to the races. I'm going to put a helmet on, and we're going to do this little aluminum project with some, uh, got some little aluminum angles cut here. And I'm going to do some uh, things and give us something to talk about. Uh, it's easier to talk with a helmet on and a torch in my hand. So let's do it. All right, I'm going to be using a little portable welding table made by Stronghand Tools. It's called a Nomad because it's got this little handy fence on it. it helps me get a 90 degree uh, angle real easily. So it's adjustable. You slip it up when you want to angle and drop it down if you just want a flat surface. 
and uh, it's going to be handy today to tack weld this little 90 degree sample here. Give us something to talk about while we're talking about properties of aluminum and how to weld aluminum. We've got little slots in it. You can put a little clamp on it and hold it down, but I'm not going to do that today because it's not a, not a lesson on fabrication where we want to just use this little sample to be able to talk about some things that are inherent with most all aluminum. So I'm going to get some tack welds on it and uh, yeah. All right, once we've got a couple of tacks on it, here's a problem when, you, when you're cutting miter cuts like this. To maintain flatness, you probably, unless you've got a perfect saw, you're going to have a gap somewhere. You don't want to close that gap up. Uh, because you'll lose your flatness. So you got to be able to weld a little gap. So tack welding the gap here, uh, depending on the cleanliness of the metal. You see how the uh, cleaning action is breaking up and frosting up that metal? Aluminum's got aluminum oxide on it. You've got to break it up. That's why we weld on AC. The reverse half of that polarity is what breaks the oxide up. But I'm sneaking up on here. I'm not melting it right away. I'm letting that cleaning action work a little bit. Puddle both sides, and then I'm going to jam the rod in there and join them together. If I had a really good fit up, a lot of times I'll just ram the metal, ram the amperage all at once and uh, get a quick tack on there. Depends on the job, depends on a lot of different things. But that's just one way of doing it, of kind of letting that cleaning action bake the crud away. All right, this, this is what one of the things I wanted to talk about. This is a good example right here. I'm putting a fusion tack on here with no filler metal, and you don't want to do that on aluminum. Hardly ever works. Almost nine times out of ten, maybe even more than that, it's going to crack. See the crack right down the middle there. Aluminum is weak as water when it's hot. It's a condition called hot shortness. Aluminum's hot short, and it cracks under heat, under certain uh, ranges of heat. It's, it's weak and brittle. Now, there's, some, there's three T-joints I'm showing here, welded by different people, and every one of them shows a crack on the very edge because it's hot short, and welding from an edge is usually not a good idea on aluminum. Sometimes you get away with it, but it's generally, uh, you, you can wind up with, with some cracks you're not careful. So welding off this tack here, you can see that frosty looking area. That's called cathodic etching. That's where it's breaking up the oxide. Now that flash on the electrode, I've got the machine set a little bit wrong here. I've got too much electrode positive in that AC balance. I need to adjust that down, but I'm just going to, once I get the metal preheat a little bit here, it's just about hot enough to weld. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this bead. You see I've got a pretty good little band, a little, little frosty area extending out past the bead because I've got a lot of electrode positive in this alternating current uh, wave here. More than I need, in fact. So it's causing me problems rounding that electrode off. It's The electrode's plenty big enough. It's a 332nd, 2% lanthanated electrode here. Plenty big enough to weld this. Uh, it's only about 70 thousandths wall thickness here, if that. Probably more like 63. So here I turn that uh, balance more more, more uh, electrode negative in that in that current, and, and it's much better, narrows the bead and all that kind of stuff. So just a side note. Mainly we're trying to talk about properties of aluminum as we work through this, but, you know, whatever. You need good shielding. When you're welding up on an edge like this, sometimes it splits your gas. I've got this electrode extended a little bit too far, and you might notice some little crud floating around in the puddle here and there. I've got a gas lens electrode. And you need a gas lens if you're, going to be, if you're going to be able to extend the electrode out as far as I have it here. A gas lens is not always necessary. Uh, some people like them. There's some cases where a standard old school collet body works just as good or better. But if you're going to extend the electrode out here like this, a gas lens is going to help you push that gas out there softer. Now, you know, sometimes saws don't cut crooked, so I grabbed some here that were really off and uh, just to weld gaps. And uh, we'll get that tacked up and uh, do a little gap welding here. I've got to get the gap rod out. You could just get a big rod and leave it in the puddle. And, uh, but just for playing here today, I'm setting the machine about one pulse a second and seeing how I like that for filling up gaps. It didn't do too bad either. So here we go. Also, I'm welding away from the uh, inside. It's always going to, a 90 joint like this is always going to want to draw to the inside. You're better off welding away from that. The joint will be more accurate, more accurate 90 degree angle when you're done if you do. And aluminum gets hot, so if you can't find a place to prop, you know, I've got one of my TIG finger dealios on there. It makes it, makes it uh, pretty easy to prop close to the weld without my pinky boiling.
So even with the big gap here, you would think that when it pulses on hot, it would just blow it away. But since it backs up, it backs off the heat every second. It's, it lets it lets it cool just for a minute. It's not working too too poorly here. You'd like to get uh, fit ups better than this, but we all know, you know, real world is pretty cruel sometimes. You get a better looking joint. Uh, better looking well than that. Uh, if you have a good fit up, you can stack dimes in there a lot better than that. All right, here's a, we'll do the, the T-joint here, still still pulsing. Another characteristic of aluminum is it's so conductive that it's hard to drive the heat down into the corner of a T-joint like this. So you kind of got to wait on it. Sometimes you got to keep a tight arc in order to get it in there. All right, another good use of pulse is like when you make a weld you ain't real happy about you can sometimes go over it and put some better looking ripples in it and make it a better looking weld, but you don't want to you don't want to get into that practice and here's why. Putting too much heat in a weld uh, will soften it up. Almost every aluminum weld is going to soften up a lot more than you think. This is a 6061 T6 test plate. That's pretty stiff metal. It's stiff. It's a decent looking weld. It was welded in a chill fixture so it didn't get very hot, but very easily bent and, and it bends like a 90 degree right in that heat affected zone where it softened it up. It's hard everywhere else, but right next to the weld, it creased because it's so much softer right there. So you got to consider things like that when you're building uh, things out of aluminum. No matter what the temper is, you're not going to have that temper right next to the weld. And very few of us, when we're fabricating things at home, are going to have the ability to reheat treat things and restore the strength. So, you know, it's something to consider when you're building something out of aluminum. All right, well, all right, a little summary here. No matter what aluminum you use, and you need to know what kind of aluminum you're using if you're building anything that's going to hold uh, you know, a person or whatever, but no matter what kind you use, it's not going to be quite as strong in that immediate weld area. Remember that. Uh, there, on the web page, if you click the link at the bottom of this YouTube video, you go to the web page, there's a good download for a filler metal guide from Alcotech. Thanks for watching WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.